cool one of a person. This is a supernova. This is actually an event that sometimes, once in a while, ends up in the media where we're told that maybe, just maybe, some star somewhere out there is actually going to cause some kind of a catastrophic disaster on our planet. Now, it does happen once in a while, usually every few years or so you hear about either Betelgeuse or I.K. Pegasi or some other star that may unfortunately blow up and cause the end of our planet. But today I wanted to actually show you what will most likely happen to our planet if a supernova relatively, I would say, nearby, but also kind of far away from us, actually did go off and how it would influence life on our planet. In other words, we're going to be talking about this is what really happens when supernova nearby goes off. So first of all, we're going to start by um, defining the uh, types of supernova. There's actually two major types. The one you just saw is referred to as a type uh, 2 supernova. So usually this happens when a very large and very massive star, like for example, the most massive star we've ever discovered known as R136A1, essentially collapses under its own weight and, well, explodes. That's a type 2 supernova, but it's actually not as powerful as the other type I'm about to talk uh, about. So this uh, here is probably the most common type as well, because there's a lot of massive stars going off all the time. And um, it essentially is responsible for producing a lot of material as well. A lot of things that are much heavier than, let's say, carbon and oxygen are usually produced during such events. And so a lot of heavier materials are basically produced here. And uh, even things that our planet are made of, things like silicates, are actually produced during such supernova. Now, we've observed a few of these, um, and we've actually studied quite a few of these as well, but most of them actually happened, actually, all of them happened in other galaxies, uh, relatively far away from us. The second type is referred to as a type 1 supernova, and this one is actually quite more powerful and essentially more dangerous too, because it basically destroys the entire star. Now, not this star, and I actually chose a relatively close and a relatively famous star just to give an example. This is Sirius A, and this right here is Sirius B. This is a white dwarf. Sometimes a white dwarf has a companion, like Sirius A, although in this case, they're actually much, much farther away from each other, so it will never happen to this particular star. But it will happen to another star that's uh, not so far away from us, known as I.K. Pegasi. I've talked about this on the channel, you can check out the video somewhere above you. And um, one day, uh, this tiny star will accumulate so much material from this larger star that it will actually reach its limit, known as Chandrasekhar limit. This concept was all explained like a few years ago on the channel. Um, I think I, I just started making videos back then. Um, and essentially, when it reaches this limit of about 1. Point, I think it's 1.44 uh, masses of the sun, it will once again go supernova, but this time the entire star will explode and all of this energy will be released at the same time and will create uh, a type 1 supernova that will be usually brighter and more powerful and if you were to compare their actual um, brightness spectra or I guess amount of energy produced, you would see something similar to this. So the type 1, which is more powerful, starts off actually a little bit less bright and then suddenly gets super bright but then within a few days, um, or maybe like a week or so, it dims relatively fast and becomes less and less bright. However, the type 2 supernova can actually last for many weeks and uh, you can actually see the, um, the supernova itself for many, many, many days and um, even several months. And this is kind of what will happen to stars like Betelgeuse, for example. So Betelgeuse will actually be visible for at least a month or so. Now, um, the energy from this is much, much higher, though. The type 1 supernova is potentially more dangerous than the type 2 supernova. But nevertheless, though, whatever type um, happens close to our planet, they will both have relatively similar effects. But before we talk about the effects, let's actually talk about how we know all this stuff. So, back in 1987, we observed the supernova that you see right here, known as SN1987A. This supernova was the brightest, most powerful supernova we've ever observed, and it was actually the closest to us. It was in the nearby galaxy known as Large Magellanic Cloud. Now, um, this particular event was actually even measurable by uh, seeing the effects of this supernova in our own atmosphere and on our own planet. And so we were actually able to quantify or to basically numerically represent 
how supernova may influence our planet if it happened closer, and so this is how we know what's going to happen. Now, unlike a common misconception, this is not what's going to happen. There's not going to be a tremendously large explosive wave that destroys everything. There's not going to be even a remote chance of anything like that happening. As a matter of fact, the supernova could go off right now and you would actually not even know that it happened. You would see it visually eventually, but you wouldn't feel it, like at all. As a matter of fact, there would be no heat wave, no increase in temperature whatsoever. The major effect that supernova do have on our planet though relate to the atmosphere and specifically to the so-called ionosphere. Now I wanted to show you this relatively complex looking picture to kind of give you an idea of what uh, usually happens when these events occur. So uh, for the most part we actually already have these effects coming off from the sun. The radiation from the sun actually changes the atmosphere of our planet pretty much at all times. And so the atmospheric layer here in the ionosphere of our, of our planet, basically the layer of the atmosphere that's um, essentially produced by the interaction with the solar rays, um, changes between the day and the night. Here's sort of a very, very rough image of what happens at night. There's two layers of ionosphere that protect us from various radiation and various rays. And at, at during the day, um, another layer here and another layer here form as well. So basically during the day, um, the sun's influence can be uh, detected by the changes in the atmosphere and specifically by various chemical reactions that um, change the actual atmospheric structure. Now it sort of depends on which part of the atmosphere you look at and um, it really depends on the altitude, but in some cases the actual radiation from the sun influences hydrogen molecules, in some cases it influences oxygen molecules, and in some cases, or actually in most cases, it acts on the nitrogen molecules, which is the most uh, common gas in the atmosphere. And actually these different rays do influence those molecules and what they do is they create various chemical reactions that then change the composition of various gases in the atmosphere. Now so far it may not sound very important, but the thing is a lot of things are actually created in the, and destroyed in our atmosphere because of these various interactions. And so for example the ozone layer um, is actually formed through various interactions with the solar rays. But we're not really talking about the sun, we're talking about the supernova. Although it's not much different. In essence, when a supernova occurs somewhere in space, it releases a tremendous amount of radiation, including things like gamma rays. And these gamma rays, um, once they make it to our planet, start acting on various molecules in our atmosphere. But really most of those reactions occur between nitrogen and oxygen. And they actually break down nitrogen molecules, so the N2 molecule, and create um, a lot of uh, compounds similar to the nitrogen oxide. But before nitrogen oxide can be created, this needs to be made. This is nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is an exceptionally uh, radical molecule. It basically reacts with a lot of stuff. It, it loves reacting with oxygen, but it also loves reacting with things that are similar to ozone. And as you can probably guess, it basically depletes the ozone layer. In other words, one of the biggest concerns with the supernova going off nearby is that it will most likely strip our atmosphere of the protection that's currently out there. It will most likely have a detrimental effect to the ozone layer and thus um, kind of expose our planet to more radiation from space. Like I said, it's not going to burn anyone. The supernova from Betelgeuse or IK Pegasi is not going to suddenly destroy our planet in a kind of a fiery explosion but it will um, very likely influence the uh, actual amount of ozone layer over time. Now, when we're talking about ozone layer amount, it's only going to be like 5%, 10% maximum. It's not going to destroy the entire ozone layer. As a matter of fact, uh, the actual human interaction with our planet that actually resulted in the depletion of ozone layer was quite detrimental as well. It was kind of actually equivalent to a supernova going off nearby. But as you know by now, actually most of the ozone layer has been replenished by our planet, so it's really good at doing that. So in that sense, a supernova going off at a distance of anywhere from 50 to 100 to 200 light years away from us is probably not really going to have that much serious effect. It will have a slight effect on the atmosphere, but our planet will recover in the next few decades. 
Although actually, just a kind of a side note, um, this year we've detected a huge, huge increase in CFCs again. So the ozone layer has actually been shrinking yet again, even though we have been successful at preventing this from happening in the last uh, decade or so. But for some reason, CFCs are back. And so what will actually happen here is that the ozone layer will deplete, the actual chemical composition of the ionosphere will most likely change, and it may actually even affect the propagation of radio waves on our planet. Now this is actually a huge topic that I don't want to cover in this video, but in a nutshell, um, the way that our radio waves propagate, the way that you actually communicate with someone over distances using radio waves is by bouncing off radio waves from the ionosphere. But in a super flare from the sun or in an actual supernova explosion from a somewhat nearby star, this ionosphere actually changes dramatically and it prevents these waves from propagating. So there might actually be a kind of a radio silence for as long as supernova is active, although that's not really going to happen if supernova is really far away. And so just to summarize, a case of a supernova happening in a distance will most likely change the atmospheric composition that will very likely um, decrease the ozone layer by a little bit, not by a lot. And it will also maybe just maybe prevent radio communication for a little bit or at least decrease the efficiency of radio communication. It's not going to kill anyone. It's not going to burn anything. And it's also not going to destroy our planet. And although in some cases, or I guess in most cases, these events are actually totally ignorable by most people, um, back in 2004, there was actually, um, most likely a supernova, it was actually a gamma ray emission that influenced the radio transmission between Hawaii and Antarctica. And it was so significant that the transmission was dramatically, dramatically lower than it would be otherwise. So in some sense, supernova do affect radio communication quite dramatically. However, they would most likely not be witnessed by anyone on the planet or actually even felt by anything living on our planet either. But so far we've talked about supernova that happened at a relatively far away distance. Um, what about if they actually happened much closer? So um, we actually discovered deposits in the uh, surface of our planet that uh, suggest that there was a nearby supernova at a distance of about maybe 20 to 30 light years or maybe maximum 100 light years away from us that did leave actual significant um, iron deposits. And um, it happened about 13 million years ago, but as far as we know, nothing really disappeared during that time. There was no actual extinction event. There was no life dying out suddenly. So even though the, this particular supernova may have happened much closer, it also didn't really have much effect other than observable molecules on our planet. In comparison to that event, um, all of the future supernovae that are going to happen close to our planet are at least 10 times as far away. Like, way, way more far away. So, don't worry, nothing is really going to destroy our planet in that sense. As a matter of fact, um, the only concern we might have is if a supernova happens within about 20 light years away from our planet. In this case, we expect about half of the ozone layer to disappear from the atmosphere. But once again, uh, you wouldn't really feel any heat or any warmth or you wouldn't really burn. Nothing would really destroy you. Um, but the ozone layer, once again, will probably recover over time. Half the ozone layer is still uh, enough to actually protect most of the life on the planet. But it will create a lot of problems if it sort of lasts for a long period of time. And the last case I wanted to mention is, I guess, a supernova that could potentially destroy everything on the planet. Now we think this may actually happen once or twice every uh, billion years or so. And we think that it may have actually occurred um, approximately 500 million years ago when all of these creepy looking, but at the same time beautiful creatures used to roam the planet or actually they were under the water. We think that um, one of the reasons that 95% of them actually disappeared was maybe, just maybe because of a huge gamma ray burst um, from a nearby supernova that may have happened within a few uh, light years away from our planet. In that case, this gamma ray burst may potentially destroy some of the life on the planet, but the chance of it being so close to our planet in the next few billion years is practically slim to none. There's not a single star near us that is going to actually create this. And although the probability of it happening may actually increase because our planet is currently entering the so-called 
Orion's arm, which I'm going to try to show you here in Space Engine. Essentially, this beautiful arm looking formation that we're slowly headed toward, where there are a lot more stars and a lot more massive stars. But once again, this will happen in millions of years from now, and the chance of a nearby star going supernova and destroying life is still very, very, very slim. So, in that sense, um, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. If you hear in the news that supernova might go off and destroy the planet, don't listen to it, it's not really true. And once uh, Betelgeuse and IK Pegasi and also stars in the Carina Nebula go supernova, we're basically going to enjoy a very beautiful light show and we might lose like a percentage of our um, ozone layer, but it's going to be very insignificant. It's going to recover pretty quickly and we're most likely going to feel absolutely nothing. So in that sense, you have absolutely nothing to worry about and hopefully now you know what happens or what will happen to our planet when a nearby supernova goes off and uh, basically creates a very beautiful light show in our night sky. Thank you for watching, hopefully now you know a little bit more about space and sciences and you understand the universe in slightly better terms. I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else. Subscribe if you still haven't and maybe even share this video with someone who loves learning about space and maybe even consider supporting this channel on Patreon. It does help me quite a lot. Space out and as always, bye bye.